The sun is king on Pictou Island. Only 9.5 kilometers long and 2.5 kilometers wide, the remote location is fully off the grid, leaving residents with no choice but to generate their own energy. I traveled there to learn more about how they do it and what life is like when you're relying solely on the sun. Wendy Foley and Lord Matheson founded Pictou Island Wooden Tents in 2015 as a way to attract visitors to the island, which only had eight full-time residents at the time. The island was dying and Wendy and I took some steps and hopefully helped to we opened a store and had ice, which is a really valuable commodity on an island like this. There's our batteries. Connecting power from mainland Nova Scotia has been attempted in the past, but sea cables would wash away or get ripped apart every spring. Matheson's mother grew up on Pictou Island, and he came back in 1999, now spending summers here. The first solar panels he bought was in 2001 when he got 120-watt panels that were $1,200 each. Now you can get 375-watt panels for three or four hundred dollars. He's got six panels now for things like his freezer, fridge, and radios, but not for heat. Batteries can store energy, but if Matheson goes five to six days without sun, he's forced to start his generator to charge them. It's also important to be conservative. It's like a blow dryer is 1700 watts. People don't realize that what that means. Like a, a light bulb used to be 100 watts, now they're like six watts. And a toaster is the same way. An oven, we've all got propane ovens. How do you get hot water off the grid? Well. It's the same concept we warn you about, about leaving your hose out on the lawn and it being a danger to children because it gets hot in there. Well, that hot water uh, is connected up to the shower. You get yourself a hot shower. Oh, doesn't it feel good? Oh, right in the middle of a vineyard. There are now 12 to 14 residents who will stay full time on Pictou Island. 